What a do, Dream Team. It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with Black Adder Season 2, Episode 4, Money. Before we dive in, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so I can suggest it. Oh my god! <laughs> Go away. My lord, there is someone at the door to see you. Oh, God. What time is it? Four o'clock. Baldrick, I've told you before, you mustn't let me sleep all day. This woman charges by the hour. <laughs> uh, my lord, it's four o'clock in the morning. Someone wants to see me at four in the morning? What is he, a giant lark? Uh, <laughs> no, he's, he's a priest. Tell him I'm Jewish. <laughs> What? Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? Oh, very well, but I think you're making a mistake. Baldrick, I'm delighted to introduce you to... I'm oh, sorry, I've forgotten your name. Molly. Of course, Molly. Baldrick, this is Molly, a dear friend of mine. I'm not dear. You're very reasonable, actually, Baldrick. <laughs> <laughs> I was charge an extra sixpence for all the horrible things he wants. Yes, all right, all right, all right. Baldrick, this is Molly, an inexpensive prostitute. Molly, this is Ulrich, a pointless peasant. Now, may I get a second? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, what about this priest? Tell him to take his sacred backside out of here. And what's more, if he comes begging again, tell him I shall report him to the Bishop of Bath and Wells, who drowns babies during christenings and eats them in the vestry afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Baldrick. Well, Bye, Molly. <laughs> say, get out! <laughs> Well, you're a one, aren't you? Well, you should be whispering sweet conversation on nothings like goodness something twice the size of the royal barge has just hoved into view between the sheets. <laughs> you don't say a word. <laughs> but enter the creature from the black latrine and you won't stop jabbering. <laughs> Treating me like a human being. Look, if I'd wanted a lecture on the rights of man, I'd have gone to bed with Martin Luther. <laughs> Yes, Baldrick, what is it now? <laughs> it's that priest. He says he still wants to see him. And did you mention the baby-eating Bishop of Bath and Wells? I did, my lord. What did he say? He said, I am the baby-eating Bishop of Bath and Wells. Good lord. <laughs> you haven't any children, have you, Blackadder? No. No, I'm not married. In that case, I'll skip breakfast and get straight down to business. <laughs> Do you know what day it is today? No, I don't. It is exactly one year ago to the day that the bank of the Black Monks of St. Herod, banking with a smile and a stab, of which I am the assistant manager, lent you one thousand pounds. Uh-oh. Our motto is repayment or revenge. Of course, and, and naturally I would have paid you back, but unfortunately, and this is the real bugger, I've gone and lost my wallet. <laughs> Disastrous. It had all my addresses in it, all those little notes saying, forget ye not, and of course, all my money. That's no concern of mine. The debt is now due. Not to repay a loan is a sin, and we black monks, we hate sin. Ah, um, Grace, <laughs> may I introduce my mother? <laughs> we black monks, we hate sin. That's a pull up under the covers. Girl under the covers. Good morning, my dear. I hope you haven't forgotten our appointment. Of course oh, not, Pompey. <laughs> yeah, I have a mind, my pretty, to play nuns and novices, so don't forget your wimple. <laughs> but as for you, you come with me. Where? To visit the last poor fool who lost his wallet. Oh. <laughs> William Greaves, born 1513 in Chelmsford with the love of Christ, died 1563 in agony with a spike up his bottom. <laughs> Tis ever and so, Nuncle with the black monks. Oh, scream, did he? Scream and gurgle as they skewered his cat flap for want of a fly. I think you get my message. Um, yes, yes, indeed. But tell me, Bishop, let me just test the water here. 
so to speak. Uh, supposing I was to say to you something like, I'm a close friend of the Queen's, and I think she'd be very interested to hear about you and Molly and the Wimple, so why don't we just call it quits a fatso? <laughs> I would say, firstly, the Queen would not believe you, and secondly, you'll regret calling me fatso later today. Ah. Oh. I will have my money by even some tonight, or... Your bottom will wish it had never been born! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, poor Tom was a cold. Pity poor Tom, for his nose is frozen, and he does shiver, and he's mad! Oh, shut up. <laughs> so, lads, I'm up a certain creek without a certain instrument. Either I raise a thousand pounds by this evening, or I get murdered. What should I do? It's obvious. What? You'll have to get murdered. <laughs> you to raise that sort of money. It's obvious. You all have to get murdered. Oh, come on, poor trick. A piffling thousand. Pay the fellow Edmund and damn his impudence. I haven't got a thousand, dumb I've got 85 quid in the whole world. But you're always boasting to the Queen about how wealthy you are. Ah, a cunning web of deceit suddenly spun about the court to improve my standing, unfortunately. What, do you mean you've been... dipping? <laughs> yep. My whole life has been a tissue of whoppers. <laughs> I consider myself one of England's finest liars. Oh, my God, Percy. A giant hummingbird is about to eat your hat and cloak. Oh, no! You see, I'm terrific. <laughs> <laughs> It seems to have gone now. <laughs> well, couldn't you just dip into the family fortune? There isn't one. My father blew it all on wine, women, and amateur dramatics. <laughs> At the end, he was eking out a living doing humorous impressions of Anne of Cleves. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. I had no idea. But do not despair, for I have some small savings carefully harvested from my weekly allowance set aside against my frail old age. By lucky hap, is just over a thousand, methinks, and has for years been hidden beyond the wit of any thief in an old sock under the squeaky floorboard behind, behind the, the kitchen, kitchen dresser. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen it. Seen it, pinched it, spent it. <laughs> and the same goes for the two farthings Borick thinks he's got hidden inside that mouldy potato. Oh, bloody yeah. hell. <laughs> then... You are doomed. Alas. For God's sake, let us sit upon the carpet <laughs> and tell sad stories. Certainly well, not. When Lord Blackadder is in trouble, he does not sit about. You won't be able to sit about with a spike up your bottom. Well, I don't. <laughs> but still, I've got 85 quid and that's a start. I'm sure I'll think of something as long as I'm not disturbed. My Lord! The Queen does demand your urgent presence on pain of death. Oh, no, damn. The path of my life is strewn with cowpats from the devil's own satanic herd. <laughs> God, hey. Madam, you sent for me. What? I don't remember. What a naughty scatterbrain I am. <laughs> that... <laughs> well, perhaps Ma'am, if I might be allowed to withdraw, I have one or two tiny matters to attend to. Certainly. <laughs> 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 that was a terrific joke, Oh, wasn't it? magnificent. <laughs> you were so naughty. <laughs> what, my lady? I do know why I wanted to see you, <laughs> and I just pretended I didn't, and I fooled you. Oh. And it worked brilliantly, didn't it? <laughs> It was terrific, madam. I thank God I wore my corset because I think my sides have split. <laughs> so, why did you want to see me? To crack the lovely joke. Or perhaps, Blackadder, you don't think the Queen's jokes are funny enough for you to be troubled with? Au contraire. I'm ecstatic about the whole instant. I only didn't laugh out loud because I was afraid if I did, my head would have fallen off. <laughs> I 
Black Adam said, I ain't got time for y'all to be bothering me with this right now, Queen. I got important things to do. Don't call me again. If you don't start soon, your head will fall off. <laughs> Eighty-five pounds and run along. Eighty-five pounds? Yes. We had a bet. I said that you wouldn't fall for my trick, and Melchie said you would because I'm so super and you're so stupid. <laughs> so you owe him eighty-five pounds. Oh, fine, fine. I mean, it's only money, isn't it? <laughs> I cannot believe it. She dragged me all the way from Billingsgate to Richmond to play about the weakest practical joke since Cardinal Wolsey got his knob out at Hampton Court <laughs> and stood at the end of the passage pretending to be a door. <laughs> oh, shut up, Walters. You'd laugh at a Shakespeare comedy. Oh, Edmund, I've awaited your return. And thank God you did, for I was just thinking, my God, I, I die in 12 hours. What I really need now is a hug from a complete prat. <laughs> Not, for I have a plan to save the life of my dear, dear friend. Look, I'm not interested in your bloody friends. What about me? <laughs> no bad, Edmund. This is a good one. <laughs> oh, all right, then. What's your big plan, blockhead? I intend to discover this very afternoon the secret of alchemy. The hidden oh, art God. of turning base things into gold. <laughs> ah, I see. And the fact that this secret has eluded the most intelligent people since the dawn of time doesn't dampen your spirit. <laughs> oh, no. I like a challenge. <laughs> well, Baldus, I lost the 85 quid. The grave opens up before me like a big hole in the ground. <laughs> well, I did have one idea, my lord, but... Nah, it's stupid. What is it? Well, I have heard there's good money to be made down the docks. <laughs> Doing favours for sailors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm about to make my boy Blackadder a prostitute. It ain't happening. Not, not to my guy Blackadder. Ain't happening. Not here. Favours? What do you mean? Delivering messages, sewing on buttons, I can't <laughs> Not quite. Baldrick. Are you suggesting that I become a rent boy? <laughs> oh, good-looking bloke like you, posh accent, nice legs, can make a bomb. Just stick a pink carnation in your hat and uh, make the old sign. I'd rather die. Oh, fair enough, that's all right, then I'll just put the kettle on while we wait, shall I? <laughs> With a slight alteration, your sick and sordid plan might just work. He's gonna make Baldry. I knew he was gonna make Baldry. <laughs> give me a kiss and I'll give you a penny. A penny? Well, all right, it's All right, go on. Nothing fancy, just a peck. I miss my mum, you see. When I was a little kid, my mother always used to Don't come... Don't get to move on. He's a prostitute, not an agony arm. <laughs> oh, please. Just a little peck on the cheek and say, There, there, Arthur. Mummy'll kiss it better, and you shall have a story. Well, I don't know. Do you do requests, Morrick? What kinky stuff? Yeah, I'm game. Oh, God, please. Oh, I miss my mother so much. I mean, she was like a mother to me. <laughs> oh, my God. Got what I'm supposed to say. Oh, get out of the way. I'll do it. <laughs> there, there, Arthur. <laughs> Mummy, kiss it better, and you shall have a story. What kind of a story? Well, I don't know. One about a squirrel, I suppose. <laughs> and then Squirry the squirrel went. Leap, leap, leap. And they all went home for tea. Oh, thanks very much, me old shivering mateys. That was wonderful. Now then. How much do you charge for a good, hard shag? <laughs> a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? You've got to be joking. <laughs> well, I'm sure we could negotiate. <laughs> right, so we've got sixpence. <laughs> yeah. 
All we need to do, my lord, is to go down the cockfights and put it on a bird that's a dead cert, but has got odds of 40,000 to 1. <laughs> know you of such a bird? No. But we could make one. <laughs> no, we couldn't, Baldrick. Uh -uh. Oh, God, I suppose you have to be told sometimes. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, you go, what you mean, you go? <laughs> make a bird. What, what, you what happens about? is... A mummy bird and a daddy <laughs> who love each other very much get certain urges. No, no, my lord, what I mean is we could get a mad wild killer bull and disguise it as a bird. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know. But it will be such a strange looking bird that no one will back it. But we'll know it's a killer bull, so we'll put money on it. Only we will know. Yeah, if we stick enough feathers on it and hang an egg between its legs. Yes, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> a chat with you and somehow death loses its sting. <laughs> My lord, the Queen does demand your urgent presence on pain of death. You're not making any friends here. You do know that, don't you, man? <laughs> You sent for me again. Yes, Edmund. I wanted to apologise for the silly trick I played on you. Ah. It was naughty and bad. It was, my little rosebud. If you weren't quite so big, it'd be time for Mr. and Mrs. Spank to pay a short, sharp trip to Botty Land. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nursie. Uh, and thank you, Edmund. That's all. Yes. Thanks for coming. <laughs> It's fantastic. Melchett, I prostrate myself at the feet of the world's greatest living comedian. <laughs> oh, you are super, Edmund. Oh, Edmund, um, I promised Lord Melchett that I would play a sharp halfpenny with him, but we have no coin. Do you have a halfpenny? Unfortunately, only a sixpence, ma'am. What a shame. Oh, no, a sixpence would do just as well. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Oh. oh my God, bro! Jeez. <laughs> Everybody he make think they go rob him, bro. Every sick, every sick. Gosh, this place sticks like a pair of armored trousers after the Hundred Years' War. <laughs> well, Rick, have you been eating dung again? Lord, <laughs> success! What? After literally an hour's ceaseless searching. I have succeeded in creating gold! Pure gold! Are you sure? Yes, my lord. Behold! Percy, it's green. <laughs> That's right, my lord. Yes, Percy, I don't want to be pedantic or anything, but the colour of gold is gold. That's why it's called gold. What you have discovered, if it has a name, is some green. <laughs> That I hold here in my mortal hand a mugget of purest green. <laughs> you do, Percy, except of course it's not really a nugget, is it? It's more of a splat. <laughs> well, yes, a splat today, but tomorrow, who knows or dares to dream? So we three alone in all the world can create the finest grief at will. <laughs> Just so. <laughs> not sure about counting in Baldrick, actually. Of course, you know what your great discovery means, don't you, Percy? Perhaps, my lord. That you, Percy, Lord Percy, are an utter burke. <laughs> Baldrick, oh lord, pack my bags, I'm going to sell the house. What? What? There's nothing else for it. I mean, I shall miss the old place, I know. I've had some happy times here when, when you and Percy have been out. <laughs> but needs must when the devil vomits into your kettle. <laughs> Baldrick. Go forth into the streets and let it be known that Lord Blackadder wishes to sell his house. Percy, just go forth into the street. 
But I have to tell you, Mr. Pants, that I've had an extremely encouraging nibble from another client, and I think you know me well enough to know that I'm not the sort of man to ignore a nibble for long. <laughs> I noticed some dry rot in the bedrooms, Timothy. Well, Mrs. Pants, dry rot is as dry rot does. Stop me if I'm getting too technical. And the floors are perhaps a little uneven. Indeed, yes, madam, and at no extra cost. <laughs> and the floors are perhaps a little uneven. Indeed, madam. And at no extra cost. Smell! Yes, that's the servant. He'll be gone. <laughs> You've really worked out your banter, haven't you? <laughs> no, not really. This is a different thing. It's spontaneous and it's called wit. <laughs> what about the privies? When the master craftsman who created this home was looking into sewage, he said to himself, Romeo, what was his name? Romeo, let's make him functional and comfortable. Oh, well, that seems nice, doesn't it, dear? I think we understand each other, sir. So, so then, drink. What about the privies? Well, what we're talking about in, um, privy terms is the very latest in front wall fresh air orifices combined with a wide capacity gutter installation below. You mean you crap out of the window? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, in that case, we'll definitely take it. <laughs> I can't stand those dirty indoor things. <laughs> there. That's the lot. He only wanted to pay a thousand, but I managed to beat him up to eleven hundred. <laughs> the new wily old trickster, you. Oh, credit where credit's due. I just named the price. It was bordering to actually beat him up. <laughs> Percy, what is that on the front of your tunic? Oh. Tis a brooch, oh my, my God. God. A brooch cunningly fashioned from pure green. Oh my God. <laughs> it looks like you've sneezed. <laughs> it is with trinkets such as this brooch, and here a ring, that I intend to revive your fortunes and buy back your house. You think there's a big market for jewellery that looks like snot, then? <laughs> The eyes are open, the mouth moves, but Mr. Brain has long since departed, hasn't he? <laughs> My lord! Ah, messenger, thank God you came. Percy and I could not have waited another second without you. <laughs> Majesty! Thank God you've arrived. Terrible news. What? The French intend to invade, back at it. My God! So I need some money. <laughs> Yes, every nobleman must pay five hundred pounds towards the upkeep of the navies. Yes, but we've decided to make you a special case. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Melchie here hasn't got a bean, so we thought, as you're so fabulously wealthy, you could pay for both. It would be awfully sweet, yes, John. Unfortunately, ma'am, I'm in the middle of a cash flow crisis, and I just haven't got any money on me. But Edmund, sorry, ma'am. What's that in your tights? Oh, good lord! <laughs> it looks like. Just over a thousand pounds. <laughs> so it is. I thought you said you didn't have any. Oh, I thought you meant real money. Oh, this is this is just a bit of loose change. I must have left it in my court piece when I said these tights the laundry. <laughs> a thousand pounds, just loosen your tights. That is flat. <laughs> anyway, hand it over. Uh, Thanks. Bye. Oh my God. Right. Well, goodbye indeed. <gasps> you have got to be kidding me, bro. Every single time he got some money, they take it. He should have threw it with it. He should not have brought it. Why would you even bring it in the first place? You know they keep taking money, so why you keep bringing money in there? Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Nelson. Goodbye, Nessie. Bye. Majesty? It's for taking the mickey out of my beloved Edmund so cruelly. 
I'm gonna knock your block off. <laughs> sir, I, I only acted to please. Oh, please! I so want to live! Oh! Praise the Lord for the gift of laughter. <laughs> Right, Baldus, I've lost the money. I'm gonna have to run away. Why, my lord? Want to avoid these months, of course. There's no point. Black Bank's got branches everywhere. Oh. <laughs> uh, if I die, Baldy, do you think people would remember me? Yeah, of course they would. Yes, I suppose so. Yeah, people would always be slapping each other on the shoulders and laughing and saying, do you remember old Privy Breath? <laughs> People call me Privy Breath. Yeah, the ones who like it. <laughs> Not popular. Um, no. We'll put it this way: when people slip in what dogs have left in the street, they do tend to say, "Whoops, I've trodden an Edmund." Hey, that ain't my guy. That what? I'm not surprised. Hey, that black guy. Yeah, you. You're very hateful. I'll show them. What have you got a plan, my lord? Yes, I have, and it's so. Cunning, you could brush your teeth with it. <laughs> All I need is some feathers, a dress, some oil, an easel, some sleeping draft, lots of paper, a prostitute, and the best portrait painter in England. I'll get them right away, my lord. <laughs> my lord, the most famous portrait painter in England, Mr. Leonardo Acropolis. <laughs> right, are you any good? No. I am a Jane, <laughs> Well, you better be or you're dead. Right, in the bedroom, beer face. Baldrick, get the dog. Well, quick. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, the Bishop of Bath and Wolves. The time has come, Black Adam. Oh, hello, Bish. The black monks will have their money, or I will have my fun. You enjoy your work, don't you? Bits of it, yeah. The violent bits. Yeah. Yeah, you see, I am a colossal pervert. <laughs> no form of sexual depravity is too low for me. Animal, vegetable or mineral, I'll do anything to anything. Fine words for a bishop. It's nice to hear the church speaking out for a change on social issues. <laughs> Have you got the money? Nope. Good, I hate it when people pay up. Say your prayers, Black Adam. He said, good, I hate it when people pay up. I get to touch you. Adam, it's poker time! Fine. Are you ever concerned that people might find you out? No, no, no. I, I kill, I maim, I fornicate, but as far as my flock is concerned, my only vice is a little tipple before even song. Oh, thank you. Bend over, Black Adam! <laughs> this is where you get... Uh, uh, drunk, my God! It's not my ball rig, actually, but the effect is much the same. <laughs> wakey, wakey, bitch! Dear me, you clerics really are slugger bits. Yeah, I, I remembered. Drunk. That's right! You should have killed me while you had the chance. You have looked... In wonder at your lost dawn, Black Adam. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I did wonder, though, what people who saw this might think. Heavens above, what creatures from hell are those? They make an interesting couple, don't they? I think. I think you probably recognise this huge sweating mound of blubber here. There's no point anyway. We have the preliminary sketches. <laughs> and bang off a couple of copies and see one for the Queen, one for the Archbishop, a couple kept aside perhaps to form the basis of an exciting exhibition of challenging young artists' work. By the horns of the Elsie Pub, how did you get me into that procession? And it's so uh, beautifully framed, don't you think? <laughs> Which is ironic, really, because that's exactly what's happened to you. <laughs> you fiend, never have I encountered such corrupt and foul-minded perversity. Have you ever considered a career in the church? 
I can never get used to the underwear. And what I could use, though, is, I'd say, £1,100 to buy back my house, £4,000 to cover some sundry expenses, ten shillings for the two doors, and, let's say, threepence for a celebratory slapper binge at Mrs Miggins' pie shop. <laughs> yes, yes, but first one question. Who is the second figure? Who could you have got to have performed such deeds? To have gone lower that man has ever gone. To have plunged the depths of degradation just in order to save your filthy life. Ah. <laughs> 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 I see, may I introduce His Grace, the Bishop of Bath and Wells, Your Grace, Lord Percy Percy, heir to the Duchy of Northumberland. <laughs> it was lovely working with you. <laughs> That's all we got. You guys got a favorite video suggestion. You can subscribe to Patreon, drop it in the comment section or in the description section of your favorite request. It's your boy, you did it. Out.